Longton sits at the southern end of Stoke-on-Trent, and it's well known for its numerous preserved pot banks, which showcase the city's ceramics history. Out of the six towns in the area, Longton is the newest, starting out as an agricultural village in the 13th century. Its growth was influenced by the 1759 construction of the road from Derby to Newcastle, which passes through Utoxeter. Historically, Longton was situated at the end of a lane that extended from Tunstall, which gave it the nickname Lane End, and some even referred to it as Neck End. Before the 19th century, the town was recognised for its coal mines and ironworks. However, by the 19th century, it had evolved into a significant hub for bone china production. The name Longton is derived from its characterisation as a long village. The town stretches along a valley, following the path of an ancient Roman road to Derby. Records from 1666 show that there were 13 houses in Longton that paid the hearth tax, and by 1784, despite the presence of a school and a church, it still had the essence of a village, but the expansion of coal pits and ironstone mines was evident. Longton Town Hall, which is located in Times Square, replaced an earlier town hall built in 1844. The current structure was built in 1863. In 1985, due to the discovery of dry rot, there were plans by Stoke-on-Trent City Council to demolish the building. However, local shopkeeper Alice Bevan spearheaded a campaign and managed to halt the demolition process. And by April 1986, the building was granted Grade 2 listed status, ensuring its preservation. There was extensive refurbishments costing £1.8 million in 2019, and it now houses offices. Longton as a town is full of history, from little bits of cobbled road to beautiful historical buildings, gorgeous architecture, and little hidden gems like this little building here, which is tucked under the bridge. Everywhere around Longton is full of history. Just the other side of the bridge, is the Crown Hotel, which was formerly known as the Crown and Anchor, and it was a large and very popular coaching inn. It was built in 1887 on the site of a former pub called the White Horse. It's still a beautiful pub. The architecture is truly stunning, and the tiles just in the hallway, which I'm assuming are Minton, but please correct me if I'm wrong, are all there in all their former glory. Nowadays, though, the hotel has seen better days, and it's not particularly used as a hotel anymore. Just next to the hotel, you'll notice this wall, steps and cobblestones that seem to lead up to nowhere. But this was actually where the church was. It was St John the Baptist Church, and it was demolished in 1979 because of mining subsidence. But from here, you can just see the scale of the crown this is a huge hotel, and it was a beautiful building, but unfortunately now, it has seen much better days. The railway in the station is part of the Crew to Derby line, which was opened by North Staffordshire Railway in August 1848. And whilst the view on one side of the railway is quite nice and historical, unfortunately, when you turn around and look the other way, you get the view of the bus station and Tesco and Argos and all of that, which doesn't quite have the same visual appeal. Luckily, there are people who love our towns and city and they create beautiful artwork just like this, which you can find at the bottom of the Strand. Now, when you look at the layout of Longton, it should be a fantastic place to shop. It's much better than Hanley, the layout is perfect. You've got the big industrial side with, like I say, Tesco and Argos, which all offers free parking. And then it's a very, very short walk up onto this, which is basically the high street. You've got the market. Let's not talk about that shop. Less said, the better. But all of this should be full of good, strong, independent businesses. But the support just isn't there. The businesses that are here do well. But I think some of them are struggling and there are still a lot of empty buildings. And the businesses are struggling, but the buildings are struggling more. 
these buildings shouldn't be in this poor a condition. And we have this in every city that we go to. I know that I'm constantly going on about heritage and saving our buildings and things, but I can't understand if we've got a housing shortage and there's that many businesses in the country, why are all the upper floors of all of our local buildings empty? Are you telling me that this beautiful building in Longton couldn't be apartments? That's the plan for the Tams Crown Works. This building has been empty for as long as I can remember, and it's been on fire multiple times. However, there is a company that's taken it over, and this whole place is going to be turned into apartments. I think it's going to be for old people, um, and independent living, but do correct me if I'm wrong. And John Tam's Pottery Company was founded in 1874. And I think, again, it's very important to keep the visual aspect of these buildings, but give them another purpose. This is never, ever going to be a pottery factory ever again. But I think we need to keep the kilns, the bottle ovens, the facades on these buildings, and just repurpose them. As we head across Longton, we find some more beautiful buildings hidden down side streets, like this old Longton C of E school, which was built in 1836, or this beautiful Longton Colour Works building, which was the office of Shaw and Copestack Limited, which were the makers of Silvac Pottery. It now just sits, sad and empty. The A50 that runs through Longton links the A500 to the A50 at Blythe Bridge, and it opened in 1997. The A50 follows a Roman road that went from Derby to Chester via the forts at Chesterton and Roaster. As with the A500 in Stoke, we lost a lot of our history and heritage and a lot of buildings through the cutting of the A50. Luckily for us though, Longton still has lots of history and lots of old historical buildings that are still used either for the same use that they used to have or they have been repurposed. A building that is a great example of still being used for what it was built for is the Sutherland China Works of Hudson and Middleton. Built in 1850, this Grade 2 listed building is the site of the last firing of a bottle oven with coal in 1978, which was something that they did in conjunction with Gladstone Pottery Museum just down the road. And I have to say, I think it's one of the most beautiful buildings in Longton. Attached to the factory is a great example of the old workers' cottages, and these are still lived in today, which is fantastic. The pub was in a state of disrepair for many years, so in 2013, it was torn down and rebuilt completely. On the other side of the road is the America Hotel and the Ensign Pottery Works, which is now CORE, or the Centre of Refurbishment Excellence. And now we come to one of the most famous streets in Stoke-on-Trent, Short Street. And I'm unfortunately going to disappoint a lot of you because this place isn't haunted and I'm going to prove to you that it's not haunted. This beautiful little street was just a cobbled little alleyway with a few workers' houses and it's become clickbait for the local newspaper and local ghost hunters as the most haunted place in Stoke-on-Trent. But unfortunately, the noises that you hear aren't ghosts. The houses are no longer houses. I'm afraid it's a car garage. So I'm sorry to disappoint you, but all of the ghosts, the black cat, the smell of smoke, the banging and clanging, it's all the guy in the garage. I had a really nice chat to him and it was actually his black cat and it's him smoking and the noise from behind this wall and behind these doors it's just him working in his garage and talking on his phone. More interestingly than ghosts, though, these buildings were used in the BBC rendition of Clayhanger by Arnold Bennett. And numbers 23 to 27 Short Street are now Grade 2 listed. One of the great things about Longton, though, is the alleyways down the back. This is the back of Core, 
and I think you'll join me in agreeing that this could have been taken a hundred years ago. And I do love to see, not rubbish like this, but I do love to see the original brickwork, the original cobbles. I just think it's very, very beautiful and very photogenic. Some of you may have seen the previous video that I made about the curved piece of metal. Well, it turns out that it's actually a metal edging stone. So the horses and carts could hit the edge of the curbstone and not break it off. I think it's very important when you're walking through the towns in Stoke-on-Trent that you either look up or down as well as just around you. Because there's little bits of history tucked away everywhere. And I think it's very, very easy to miss them. Add that to our local artists who create beautiful graffiti like this snake. And I think it gives a great mix. This is truly a stunning piece of art, and it's not permanent, it hasn't broken anything, it hasn't ruined anything. I just think it gives off a beautiful artistic vibe to the building. This is another truly stunning building that is still used for its original purpose. This is Duchess China, and it was built in 1888 and called Dresden Porcelain Company, which created beautiful China tea and breakfast services. And it's still a very successful business, which is owned by former employees. Things do start going slightly downhill as you head back down into the town, though. Some of these buildings genuinely have seen better days. And I stand by what I said before about I don't understand why the upstairs of these buildings aren't used for housing or offices. I think everybody knows Gladstone. But I don't think as many people know Roslyn Works, which was originally Park Place Works, and is made up of several small businesses. And it was made up of small businesses as early as 1815. And this beautiful little empty building across the road was actually the shop to the factory. And you can just sort of make out some of the words where it says factory shop above the window. Gladstone is part of the site and it's been there as early as 1787. There's also patches of land in Longton that aren't being used for anything, and I do hope that something nice and useful pops up in these spaces. This large building here, belonging to Stephen's solicitors, is a stunning Georgian building, and it was originally the Grand Hotel, which was a busy posting inn. And thanks to businesses caring for it, it's largely unchanged. But for every cared for building in Longton, there's 10 that just aren't. Victoria Buildings is having a £208,000 shop front refurbishment. I don't know if many people look up at these buildings as they head around the one-way system in Longton, but if they did, they'd notice this beautiful ghost sign that's popping out through the plaster that's fallen off the front of the building. Can anyone make out what it used to say? Or what the sign was for? And this beautiful black building is the Beck Building, built in 1877, and belonged to the Beck Blair and Company, who owned the Beaconsfield Pottery on Anchor Road. Now this alleyway might just look like an alleyway between two buildings, but it's actually called Handcuff Alley, and I'll tell you why. This alleyway joins Market Street to Sutherland Road and they used to take the prisoners from the police station on Sutherland Road to the Longton Courthouse on Commerce Street. Now the courthouse used to stand up near where Stephen's solicitors is today or what was the old Grand Hotel but this was demolished in 1950 and the brick wall to the right belongs to Park Hall Pottery and was built in 1878. And the great thing about walking down these back alleys is that you get a glimpse of what the history used to be like because there's no road signs, there's no modern lighting, and there's not many cars. So you get a real sense of what it used to look like. And for some reason, at the bank, there's always some old car sat here. There used to be a Mark II Golf, and now there's a what looks like a Polo. So yeah, that's interesting. This is horrible and an eyesore, and has always been an eyesore. It would have been an eyesore when it was new, so let's just knock that down. This dark and imposing building once belonged to the Siples family and stands on land where the Market Street works were. 
and this was one of the oldest factories in Lane End. This particular building was built in 1881 for the Cyples family to mark the spot where the old factory stood. But whilst these buildings look like they're not in terrible condition, the plant life that's growing out of them might say otherwise. And if someone doesn't start to take care of them soon, they're gonna start crumbling. Which unfortunately is happening all too often in Longton. There's been multiple buildings that have just fallen down and it's got to stop. We either need to repair and repurpose the buildings that we've got or demolish the weird things that they built in the 70s and start again. This whole shopping complex is horrible and isn't really used much anymore. A lot of the bottle ovens and older buildings have been part of the Longton Conservation Area or the Heritage Action Zone and it's been protected and they've been made safe. But for buildings like these that have no protection, they're just going to start crumbling. And unfortunately, they're just empty. The windows are open, there's cracks in the mortar, and the water's getting in and the damage is already being done. Why are there so many empty buildings? Can we really think of nothing else to do with these buildings but to let them sit empty? Tucked away behind the chipboard that covers it up is the old Martins bank. Now I'm going to assume that the inside of this building is full of the original features because it's still got the beautiful original wooden doors. Next door to this is the Midlands Bank. Now this building was actually built in 1921, although the date above the door says 1836, which was when Birmingham and Midland Bank was founded. Now, I don't know how many of you have noticed as you've gone through Longton, this interesting little building in the middle. This is actually a Dutch gable, and it was originally a clothing shop called Hayden's, and these had shops in Hanley and Tunstall. But it makes you wonder who was interesting enough to create a building like this with a Dutch gable. It's just so small and quaint and different, and I absolutely love that little building. In July 2023, the front of the building with the scaffolding on here fell off into the road. Just fell off. And I'm recording this video now in October. And what you can see there is the main beam through the building. So the structural components have completely gone. This building's going to have to be demolished. But you've got to ask the question, why is it still boarded up and scaffolding on it so many months later and nothing being done about it? So I hope you've enjoyed this walk around Longton with me. There's some good, there's some bad. It's a beautiful town. It's an underrated town. But unfortunately, some of these buildings are not going to survive much longer unless we start looking after them. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, please go and check out my other videos. And if you enjoy local history, don't forget to give me a follow.